There are lots of things all around us, exciting things that surround us. But how does it work? Do you know? How is it made? Do you know? Things that go up, things that go down, things that go pop, things that go round with special cameras to show you in. I'm Maddie, and today I've come to the supermarket to do some shopping. There are so many things to choose from. What shall we have for lunch today? We need bread to make sandwiches. What do you like in your sandwiches? I like cheese. And tomatoes. And how about some bananas too? At the checkout, the checkout assistant scans all of the items. Oh, there they go. Beep. <laughs> but how does the checkout know what the items are and how much they cost? Well, it's to do with something that's printed on the item. It's got these black and white stripes. Do you know what it is? It's called a barcode. But how does a barcode work? Let's find out. How does it work? Barcode. All over the world, five billion barcodes are scanned every single day. And in this supermarket, there are thousands and thousands of barcodes. There's one here. And look, another one here. In fact, almost every item in the supermarket has a barcode printed on it. Can you see, if you look closely, the barcode is made up of lots of thin black lines. It makes a pattern of black and white stripes that look a little bit like a zebra. And then if you look underneath the lines, there are lots of numbers. This is called the barcode number. Every type of product in the supermarket has a different barcode with a different number. These packs of bananas have the same barcode because they're the same product. When we go to pay for our shopping, all the barcodes can be scanned at the checkout. The checkout has a computer inside, and underneath this glass panel, there's a machine called a scanner that looks and reads the barcodes. The items come down the conveyor belt, and Roberta will pass the barcode over the scanner. And that's my favourite part. Did you hear it? It went beep. But how does the scanner read the barcode? And how does the computer tell us what the item is and how much it costs? I think we need to take a closer look. When the barcode is passed over the scanner, it shines a red LED light onto the barcode. The LED light reflects back off the barcode and into a sensor. The sensor makes a pattern of electrical pulses to match the pattern of the barcode stripes. Inside the scanner, the pulses are changed into numbers. Zero for the white stripes and one for the black stripes. This is called a digital signal. The digital signal is changed into a 13-number barcode, which is sent to a computer. The computer has thousands of barcode numbers stored in its memory, and each number matches an item. When the computer matches the barcode number with the correct number in its memory, it tells us what the item is and how much it costs. Wasn't that brilliant? But did you know that the barcodes also help the supermarkets keep all of the shelves stacked with all the right things at the right time? Let's find out how. 
I really want four cans of this soup, but there's only one can left. Now, the supermarket might have some more soup that they could put on the shelf for me to buy, but how do we know? Well, we can use the barcode. The shop assistant can scan the barcodes using an app on their mobile phones called a barcode reader. This sends a message to the supermarket computer to check if there are any more cans of soup left. And it says that, yes, there are more in the warehouse that's just behind the shop. Let's go see if we can find it. This is the warehouse where all of the items that are waiting to go on the shelves are kept. Ah, here we are. These look like our cans of soup, but I'm going to check. They're the same ones. I'm going to put my special camera on this cage so we can follow the soup cans into the supermarket where they'll get put on the right shelf. Here we go. The cans are stacked on the empty shelf. And now I can take my four cans of soup to the checkout. where the barcodes are scanned. The computer can then tell us what the items are and how much they cost. All I have to do now is pay for all my shopping. I loved seeing how a barcode works. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember the name of the app that scanned the barcode on the can of soup? That's right, it's called a barcode reader. Did you hear the sound the computer made when it scanned the barcode? And did you see how the cans travelled from the warehouse to the shelf on my special camera? Now that we've scanned the barcodes and paid for our shopping, it's time to put it all in a bag. Oof, what should we have for tea tonight? I've got some frozen peas, some carrots and fish cakes. I love fish cakes. Do you like fish cakes? Fish cakes aren't like the cakes you have for pudding or for a treat, are they? <laughs> no. Fish cakes are made from fish and potatoes, and sometimes they have vegetables in them too. But do you know how fish cakes are made? Let's find out. How is it made? Fish cakes. <laughs> to make fish cakes, we need fish. And that all starts here, at a port. Every day, lots of fishing boats come into this port with their catch of fish. But where do they go from here? They're brought here to a fish filleting factory. And all along this line are where the fish are sorted and cleaned. There are lots of different types of fish, like this pink fish here. It's called salmon. But for our fish cakes today, we're using this type of fish. It's called a cod. Isn't it huge? This is Simon, and it's his job to prepare the fish. He uses a knife to very carefully take the meat off the bones of a whole fish, and we call this filleting. Next, Simon cuts the cod into chunks. But to turn this into fish cakes, we're going to need some more ingredients. First, we need potatoes. They've already been peeled and sliced, and now they're put onto a conveyor. At the top, the potatoes are dropped into this steaming silver tube, and inside, the potatoes are cooked. fish cakes, we need mashed potatoes. And you might have had mashed potatoes at home or even used a potato masher. But to mash lots and lots of potatoes, we need something much bigger than this. So here, there's a giant potato masher with a rotating blade inside that chops and mashes the cooked potatoes. 
The fresh mashed potato is then sucked along this tube where it's then spread out onto a tray. Ooh, here it comes. That is perfect mashed potato. Not a lump in sight. Wow. This is the really exciting bit where all of the ingredients are mixed together. And first, the fish is lifted and tipped into this huge tank. Look at all of the fish tumbling around. Now, after a little bit of mixing, the other ingredients are added. In goes the mashed potato. <laughs> then dried potato flakes, salt and a green herb called parsley are added. The mixing machine has two blades that turn around and these mix all of the ingredients together. The finished fish cake mixture is tipped into this huge funnel and I'm going to see if I can watch this on my special camera. coating, breadcrumbs. This is my special slow motion camera and it lets me see things slow right down. So, let's take a look at the breadcrumbs. Whoa, it's like having a breadcrumb shower. Next, the fish cakes are dipped in very hot oil to make the coating nice and crispy before being frozen in a very cold freezer means we can store the fish cakes for longer. And here they come out the other side, frozen solid. Can you hear the sound as they rattle down their little slide? <laughs> How brilliant is that? For the final stage, the frozen fish cakes travel along this conveyor, where they're put into little plastic packets and sealed to keep them fresh. And here we have a finished pack of fish cakes. They're all being boxed up so they can be sent to shops, ready for us to buy and cook at home. I love fish cakes. What was your favourite bit about seeing how frozen fish cakes are made? Do you remember what fish was used in the fish cake? That's right, it was cod. Did you hear the sound of the frozen fish cakes rattling down the slide? <laughs> how brilliant is that? And did you see the breadcrumbs pouring onto the fish cakes on my special camera? It looked like a shower. So the next time you have fish cakes for tea or you see some at a supermarket, you'll know how they're made. And now you know how barcodes work to make buying things quicker and easier. Right, I'm off home to go and cook dinner. I'm having fish cakes tonight. I'll see you next time.